Alright, this is the first in a series of videos on the Arion, redeeming the Arion. Arion was a company that was uh, in Kansas City that made uh, jukeboxes in about 1947-1948. They only lasted a couple of years because they got such a a bad reputation, which I think some of it was undeserved. Probably the larger uh, producers, Wurlitzer and Seberg, were not thrilled with a low-cost competitor, and I'm sure they enhanced the the bad reputation of Arian. So, this is the mechanism from um, one of the machines. Uh, it's a later one. It has a, a counterweighted tone arm. The earlier tone arms that they used had a, a spring uh, counterweight, which is absolutely crappy. So we don't want that. Um, the, the counter, uh, the weight is easier to deal with. Um, just the view of the mechanism right now. It's in the vertical position. This is the um, selector for the um, records. Of course, it has 24, um, and there's a solenoid that pops that down, and that uh, causes it to choose the record. Over here, we've got the um, infamous arm that is uh, supposed to break the records. Um, here's a, a uh, caddy, the record caddy that drops on there. I won't put that on there right now because I want to show how this thing works. Uh, there's the turntable. Um, it has a separate motor, electric motor for the turntable, and a separate motor for the mechanism. And uh, the mechanism motor is an Oster blender motor. <laughs> I suppose that's all they could get after World War II. So uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on, and we'll show you how this this works. And uh, hopefully we'll not make too much of a mess out of this video. Alright, so you've got this, it uh, is scanning the um, area, loads it up, plays the record. There's a little uh, micro switch back here that when the turntable comes down, you'll see it um, presses on that micro switch so that will let the system know it's, it's playing one. Go ahead and pick a, we'll pick a record, and uh, scanning now, and uh, it will find it. Lo and behold, there we go. So if that were on there, it would push the record on, turn it on, turn the turntable on. I don't have that hooked up right now, and uh, play the record for you. It's just in kind of continuous cycle mode because none of the interface relays and that sort of thing are hooked up with it right at the moment. But you get an idea how it works. It's really pretty ingenious. Um, they have a gear set down here that um, is uh, fairly simple. Uh, design really. It's pretty ingenious and uh, a lot simpler actually than some of the Wurlitzer and other things that you see. Um, I've rebuilt some Wurlitzers and Seabergs and things and uh, this is actually pretty nifty. So you can see it's just pretty much the central gear there um, running the whole show. Pretty nifty. Um, so this is our first attempt at uh, hopefully convincing you that uh, the Arians are worth rebuilding. It's a very heavy duty mechanism. The business with the broken records relates to the spring that uh, holds that arm back and uh, as long as that's kept tight you don't break records. So it really wasn't an everyday phenomenon. It was something that they really played up. So in a little bit we'll show you what it looks like installed in a Fiesta Deluxe um, and uh, playing a record. 